that feels good. Finally, sheeting is finished. So, as I've been up here sheeting this roof, I've come to the conclusion that I've, I've been in denial about a pretty important issue of this renovation, and that is the condition of my existing roof. The more I stand up here and look at it, you can see that there's the alligator skin cracking going along pretty much this whole south side and even on the north side where it's mostly in the shade which means that this roof does not have a lot of life left in it and I don't really want to tie in a brand new torch on roof to an old roof because that could be potentially problematic and this roof is going to be toast probably I don't know I don't know how many years are left on it maybe five years funny thing is this house was built in 75 and it had a tar and gravel roof on it first, which I would guess maybe had 25 years of life on it. 30 years max, probably. So let's say that this roof was, the, tor the tar and gravel was then covered over with this torch on roof. They put four by eight sheets of a tar board, they'd hammer that down and then they torch this roll roofing onto it. And so that would have been around 2000 or 2005. So this roof is only, I don't know, 12 to, 18 years old? That doesn't make any sense. Why is it toast? This torch on roofs are supposed to last for like 50 years. They're supposed to be even better than any of the duroid or asphalt shingles. So, but the more I think about it, the more I realize that this 70s house has terrible venting. I've only got two vents on this whole roof, 42 foot long roof. There's only two roof vents. I think there might be a little eave vent and the soffit vents are just a few tiny little strips in the stucco. Like there's very little venting in this roof. And I know for a fact that my house is a freaking hot box in the summertime because there's missing insulation around the edges and there's not enough insulation in the attic. So my guess is that the heat on the outside and the underside is just baking this roof because it's not getting sufficient airflow to keep the roof cool. And so the temperature of the roof is just getting stupid high and that's just destroying the roofing either that or they just used a really cheap roofing product i don't know where they got it or whatever but i've never seen torch on like torch on do this crackling stuff when it's such a young roof doesn't make any sense but regardless the, i'm gonna need to replace this whole roof so it's gonna add a week and a half and several thousand dollars in materials to uh, this renovation but at least when it's done i know i'll have a solid roof throughout the whole building including the addition here so just gotta bite the bullet and do it oh my gosh just hemorrhaging money on this addition There'll be light. prep for a torch on here by adding in these four inch cant strips. It's just a four by four with a 45 cut on it. You can buy them that way at the lumber yard. Um, but my drain for my gutters is gonna be down at that end near the valley. So I need to add a bit of slope to this. Like right now the roof is level, but I wanna add a bit of drainage so that I don't have any water puddling down here. I want it all to go towards the downspout. So all I gotta do for that is I cut my cut my 45 an inch back from the framing so that this cant strip as an exaggerated view basically will be in a little bit here which, and tapering back that way which raises the bottom raises this level where the water sits higher than that end and creates drainage towards the downspout. So I'm gonna, right here, because the roof has an angle and the cant strip is 90, right? Right now, with my fascia being plumb, it would have a little, uh, it would be sticking out. So I've just pulled it back so that it's in the plane 
of the fascia, and there'll be a little bit of gap in behind right here. But I'm just gonna put this, and then I'm gonna run the cant strip flush with the framing over there, and I'll just have to trim or plane the back edge plumb with the fascia board. So I'll take off a little bit with my power planer. That way I've got a nice slope. Easy peasy. All right, so now when I put my level in here, I've got about strong quarter, almost three eighths of an inch, over six feet. So over 14 feet, that's you know, over three quarters of an inch slope that way. Plenty to drain the water. Oh yeah, my French door arrived, finally. It's nice not having to do any of the heavy lifting. <laughs> what am I on, a TV show? Yeah, bro. Samurai Carpenter, man. <laughs> Are you ready for triple speed? Okay, at this. Triple speed? Whoa! <laughs> ready? Whoa! <laughs> that sounds, oh yeah! Bumper cars, go! Whoa! Yeah! Oh, nothing beats a roll of poly. Some water and some laundry soap. Mommy's gonna, mommy's gonna shoot you like a missile, just like Daddy does. Come on up. How do you do it? Your turn. Just you put your leg and hand in between his butt cheeks, basically, and just launch him. Okay, ready? Go. Yeah. <laughs> <Woo. laughs> All right, so I'm just putting down my threshold membrane here. Keep my threshold. Getting wet. Just use this little Henry Blueskin primer stuff. Comes in a spray bomb made specifically for this. It's essentially contact cement. This makes it real sticky. I sprayed that. You can see where I sprayed all that along here. You let it dry for 10 minutes just like you would contact cement. And then you start peeling it out. You only get one shot with this stuff. Don't miss your chance to blow. It comes once in a lifetime. So I'm leaving this open here so that when I put my waterproof membrane on the deck, I'm gonna have a similar piece like this, made of, it's made by Schluter, it's just a little band called Curdy Band or whatever. And I'll mortar that down and then up here as well. So this will have like a double layer of protection going up the building here. And then I'll put my waterproof membrane, or I'll put my waterproof membrane down first and then I'll mortar that onto that and I wanna get it underneath my, my building paper here so I've left all this loose so that I can get all that underneath and I'll probably even put a cap flashing once I've finished my tile. Um, I'm not going to tile up the wall, I'll just put a flashing, a white flashing coming down onto the tile to hide any of the bands and membranes that are hiding in behind and protect them. Then I'll put this over top of that, cut that and then do my siding from there. pay attention to the way that I'm cutting this. See how I cut, I cut the first one so that it cut right up here and then that flap folded over there and then this one folds over here and I cut it along the bottom and then that flap seals that joint. So there's absolutely no way water can penetrate anywhere in along this joint now because it's been folded over twice both directions. And before installing exterior doors, once you've got your membrane on there, you want to put a nice big bead of exterior grade sealant caulk on there. This is, I use Supra, it's like what the gutter guys use to seal gutters around here, so super sticky, silicone kind of stuff. 
And then when you set the door, it seals right down into that and creates a barrier that no bugs or water or anything can seep in underneath your door. Five hundred Canadian pesos later, uh, all the materials are showing up for my roof. Yeah, that's just the materials bill for re-roofing this house. So we're gonna see if this truck can fit up this little narrow kind of driveway we got here. The truck's eight feet. The lane is about nine and a half, tight to the hedge and that fascia down there. So it's gonna be a stretch. So if this high ab truck can't get up here with his crane, then he's gonna have to drop all the materials down in the driveway, which will just make this roof that much more painful to get done. I think the roof's gonna hold you guys because we've got about 3,500 pounds sitting right on the peak right here. I went and looked inside and the trusses are deflecting about 3 eighths half of an inch over the 14 foot span with you know over 3,000 pounds, 3,500 pounds sitting right on the peak and then we got another 3,500 probably 4,000 pounds right there Obviously, I put that right over the corner of the wall where it's going to be <laughs> strongest. And even the beam over the window, I still got my quarter inch gap on the top, so the beam's not deflecting at all. So she's, she's sturdy. You can see my, my Eve, if you stand down below, is bending kind of at the corner where it has the least amount of support. I'm quite pleased with how my roof is putting up with this much weight. I've got another 500 pounds sitting over in the valley here. These rolls are easily 100 pounds each. And when I walk on the roof of my existing house here, like the two by four trusses in there, there's probably like a 10 foot span where there's no webbing or anything and you walk on it and it bounces and stuff. So if that's lasted since the 70s, and I know of one major blizzard that we had back in 96 where we had about three and a half feet of snow. If that didn't collapse this roof, well, this roof is gonna be A-OK. -okay. So the last thing I've got to do before I can actually put this roof on is finish framing out for these soffits or at least the fascia so that I can get my fascia board on and then build up my can strip to be able to do the gutter. So the old fascia here was 90 degrees to the roof pitch but I'm going to plumb it vertically. So what I'm doing is I'm just adding little blocks to all the rafter ends. I got a string line set up here and then I'm just going to screw those in and then I'll frame my soffit in after but this allows me to set my board along here like you can see have a nice straight fascia board and then i can attach my 2x12 primed fascias to that and get going on the roof that's as far as i've gotten for this video guys Whew. this is just an insane amount of work but i really appreciate you guys following along i hope you guys are learning some stuff if anything you're learning not to do insanely large renovations on your house with just two people because it takes forever. If you're just showing up to the party, you know, be sure to check out my website. I've got woodworking plans for toolboxes and workbenches and all that sort of stuff. Link down below. There's also t-shirts and swag, lots of awesome stickers. So be sure to check that out, you guys. And until the next video, Samurai Open.